In this video, we're going over how to use the Samsung Galaxy A32 for beginners. Welcome back to another video. I'm your tech guide, Wayne. If you find this video helpful, make sure you hit that like button down below. Consider subscribing and tapping the notification bell so you can be alerted every time we post new videos. Today, we're gonna to walk you through how to use this Samsung Galaxy phone. And this is a full beginner walkthrough, so we're gonna go over all the basics um, so that if you've never used a smartphone before, you will know how to use it after watching this video. To give you a quick timeline of what we're gonna cover in this video, um, we're gonna first go over the button layout, how to navigate the phone, um, how to download applications, how to make calls, how to send text messages, and a few other um, fun features that come with this phone. So definitely stick with us. We have a lot of great things to share with you and feel free to leave comments in the description below. If there's something else you'd like us to cover, we will try to do a follow-up video to cover those things. This video is sponsored in part by GrooveMade.com. I recently gave my office a modern makeover with the help of GrooveMade.com. Their sleek and stylish products have given my office a new fun vibe and you can find inspiration and a great selection of products to give your office a new groove and new vibe today. Check out the link to their site in the description of the video. Let's get started with a quick tour of the exterior buttons of the phone. So on the right side of the phone here, you will find the volume up, volume down, and the power button right here. Now the power button is how you turn the phone on and off. Now, if you just tap the button when the phone is already on, it will put the phone asleep, but uh, tapping it again will wake the phone up. So just a quick tap, again, just wakes the phone up, turns the phone off, but it's always still sleeping and still sort of awake. Okay, if you wanna power the phone off completely, what you'll first need to do, so tap the power button, make sure you can see the screen, and just take your finger and you're gonna drag it across the screen. And let me try it one more time. So put your finger on the screen and just drag it right across. And that's how you wake up the phone or you unlock the phone. Next, we'll need to swipe down from the top of the screen here and do a second swipe, so two times, and that will bring up this button here. This is your power button. So we'll tap there, and then we'll tap the power and power again, and that will actually turn off the phone. So important thing to know, holding the power button down is actually programmed to do something different. So um, this is the kind of automated way to turn off the phone. Now, um, there is a way to change that, and I will go over that uh, later on in the video. There's a way to reprogram the power button so that, um, actually, I can go over that right now. As soon as the phone wakes up, I'll walk you through how to change that power button so that when you hold the power button, you can turn the phone off versus having to swipe down the screen. So I'll show you that. Um, while the phone is restarting, I'm just gonna continue my quick tour of just the outside of the phone. So volume up volume down and the power button right here. On the left side, you'll notice there are no buttons. Um, at the top of the phone, you will find um, the SIM card tray right here. And for those of you that have a SIM card you're bringing over from an older phone, this is where you would put in that SIM card, just right there at the top. So you'll need to grab the, the box and find this little tool. This is called your SIM tool and there's a little hole at the top that you can um, just put that in and push. And this will pop out your SIM tray just like this, just enough for you to then take it out. And then you can put in your um, micro SD card from an older phone and then have all those new pictures show up on this phone. So just as a disclaimer, that's how you do it, but you will need this. If you can't find this in the box of your phone, just find a paper clip, bend it back, and it will also allow you to open up the phone. At the bottom here, you will find the power cord, or the charger, um, the charging port, excuse me. And this phone does use what's called a Type-C charger, 
So if you need to buy a replacement, look for a Type-C charger. Uh, in the description of the video, you'll find a link to uh, our best accessories for this phone, and you'll find um, a replacement charging cable, longer charging cables, things like that. So definitely check that out if you're looking for more cables for it. It also does have a headphone jack on the left side there, so you can plug in your traditional headphones. So I just tap the power button here to wake it up. I'm just gonna slide or do a swipe. That's how we unlock the phone. Now quickly, I'm gonna show you how do we change the menu so that holding the power button will actually turn the phone on and off for you. So you're just gonna swipe down from the top of the screen, swipe a second time, and swiping is just putting your finger on the screen and just dragging. That's whenever I say swipe, that's what I'm referring to. So tap on the power button at the very top, not this magnifying glass, but the second button right here. And when you tap on that button, at the very bottom, it'll say side key settings. Tap there, and we're just gonna change this to, uh, right here it says press and hold to wake Bixby, which is the smart assistant. We're gonna change this to power menu. And now, when we go back home, if I hold down the power button just like this, it'll take me right to this menu, which allows you to turn the phone off if you want to or restart it. So that's a quick little um, tweak you can make to make it easier to turn the phone on and off. Now that we're done with our tour of the buttons on the outside and the SIM card tray, now we're gonna move into how to navigate the home screen. So this is considered the home screen of the phone. At the bottom here, you'll find three buttons, recent apps, home, and the back button. I'm gonna go over what each, what each button does. The first thing is uh, the home button, very important. No matter what you open, tapping the home button takes you back to this screen, which is the home screen. Let's say I were to tap on the uh, phone button because you wanted to make a phone call. Um, I can, you know, dial the number, tap the green button to make a call. And when I'm finished, I'm just gonna tap on this button in the middle, this little circle, and it will take me back to the home screen. No matter what I'm doing, it's always gonna take me back to the home screen when I tap on this button. Now, to the right here, we have what's called the back button. This is a button that takes you back one step. Um, as an example, I'm gonna swipe down and tap on the settings wheel in the corner to get to the settings menu. So let's say I'm in the settings and let's say I tap on the, uh, let's see, let's say I tap on advanced features and I'm reading this menu and you know what? I don't find the thing that I'm looking for. No problem. I can tap on this little back button here and it will take me back one screen just like that. So that's all the back button does. It just takes you back one step. Now. Right now we're on the main page of the menu. So if I tap the back button again, there's no other page for it to take me to. So it's just gonna take me out of that app. So I'm gonna tap it and it's gonna take me back home. So it's just a quick shortcut to always help you move back one step. Now the last button here on the left, the recent apps button, this shows you any apps that you had open um, that are still running in the background. So if you notice, we opened the, the phone app and then we opened the settings. Now we didn't actually close those apps. We just opened them, started doing something, and then we went back to the home screen, which is the screen we're on now. So if I tap the recent apps button, I'm gonna see those two apps show up. Settings and the phone button, okay? So if I wanna actually close out these applications, I can do what's called a, just a swipe up and that will close those applications. So just swipe up and it will close those applications as well as any other applications that are still running in the background. Now let's say I wanna go back to settings because I was working on something and I'm still working on that. Well, I'm gonna tap the recent apps button and guess what? Because I never closed it, it's still open. I can simply tap on it and now I can easily get right back to that app and continue to work on, 
continue working on what I was doing. So that's one of the benefits of this button here is it, it will always show you what's running in the background and you have a quick way to get back to whatever you're working on just by tapping that button. Now, once I'm finished with this, I can always just swipe up to close it or I can tap close all and it will close this application as well as all the other applications that are running in the background. Now, one quick point I forgot to mention, whenever I refer to uh, an app, um, an app is short for application. Think of an application like a program on a computer. So computers have programs, phones have apps or applications. So whenever I say app, I'm just referring to these little icons here. These are the computer version of a program. They're just apps, which is short for applications. Okay, so now that we've gone over the buttons, the next thing I wanna go over is uh, what is called your notification panel. Now, if you take your finger and put it at the top of the screen and just swipe down, it'll bring up what is called the notification panel. So um, if ever one of your applications has a new message that has come through, it'll show up in this section. For example, let's say you sign into your Gmail you would be able to see any of your new messages in this section, a new, a new Gmail. If someone were to send you a text message, it would also show up in this section. If you had a missed call, you would just simply swipe down and go to this section and it will show you if someone has called you recently. So this is just where all the notifications for all the different things happening on the phone, this is where they all come through and how you check it easily. Let's say, this was a call right here. If it was a missed call, I would just tap on it and it would take me right to the phone app and I could see who called and then I could call them back. So this is how you uh, kind of interact with all the notifications that are coming through your phone. Now at the top of the screen here, you have what are called switches. Um, these are just shortcuts to different settings for your phone. And one of the most important shortcuts is right at the top here, which is your Wi-Fi shortcut. Let's say you have Wi-Fi at home and you'd like to connect to your wireless internet. You can turn that option on right here. Now I can tap the button and once it lights up in blue, that's how I know it's on. And then it should bring up the menu for me to select any Wi-Fi networks that are available. Now, the menu didn't come up, which is no problem. So I'm gonna swipe down again. And this time I'm gonna hold down on that little Wi-Fi icon, which is the first one we see here. Just hold down. And it'll bring up a list of all the available Wi-Fi networks. So let's say you're at a friend's house and you'd like to connect to their wireless internet or their Wi-Fi you would look for their network in this list. Let's say their Wi-Fi was um, this one here, My Spectrum. I would just tap on it, and then it's gonna bring up this screen and ask me to type in the password for their Wi-Fi network. So you'd have to ask them, hey, what's your Wi-Fi password? And then they would give it to you, you type it in, hit connect, and then your phone can connect to their Wi-Fi. So that's how you easily connect to Wi-Fi on the phone. Now, that's just one switch you'll find at the top of the screen here. You'll find this next switch here, which controls the volume. So the way the volume currently looks, the icon, this means that my volume is turned up. If I wanna put the phone on vibrate, I would simply tap on the little speaker right here. And now you'll see a little slash over the speaker, which means now your phone is on vibrate. Now, if I tap it again, now, you notice it's not lit up at all, and that means that your phone is on silent. So your phone won't vibrate or you, it won't make any noise when you receive a notification or a phone call. Now, if you wanna turn it back on to regular sound, just tap it again, and now your sound is back on. So that's how you switch between vibrate, silent, and normal sound. And you'll find a few other cool options here. So Bluetooth, if you have a Bluetooth speaker at home or headphones and you wanna to connect to it to play music or take calls, 
you want to make sure this is lit up. And then if you want it to connect to that Bluetooth device, just take your finger and hold down on that icon until this menu comes up and then the, your phone will begin to search for any available Bluetooth devices it can connect to. So you'll need to then take your Bluetooth device and put it in the pairing mode and that will vary based on the device but in the settings or uh, on the in the manual of that device look for something that says pairing mode and make sure your other device is in the pairing mode first and you should see it show up in this list and then you can tap on it to connect to it. You might need to come up to the top here and tap on scan and that just tells the phone hey start looking for new Bluetooth devices because you're trying to connect to one. Okay and um, just a few more things you've got your screen rotation this rotates the phone when you turn it sideways this is your airplane mode for when you fly it turns off all your cellular connections which they ask you to do when planes take off. And then here you have your flashlight. When you tap that, you have a flashlight that will allow you to use your camera flash as a light. Now, um, one cool thing to note is swiping down one time brings up these six. But when I swipe again a second time, you'll notice we have more options available. So mobile hotspot, we have our power saving mode, our GPS, so if you want to turn on our device GPS settings, screen recording, um, smart view if you want to connect your phone to your TV, um, and a QR code scanner right here as well. Do not disturb, dark mode, all these other cool settings you can take advantage of as well. So those are just a few other switches you can get to. They're just shortcuts to, again, things you'd find in the settings. Now, I also want to point this out when you swipe down that second time, you now have access to your brightness for the phone. So if the phone is too bright, you can simply turn it down using the little slider at the bottom here. Or you can say, it's not bright enough. I want it brighter. So then we can slide it the other way to make the screen brighter, just like that. So that is your notification panel. And um, that's where you'll find, again, your notifications and shortcuts to different um, settings you may need to control. Okay, moving on to our next section, I'm now going to go over uh, applications. So where do you find them? How do you download them? And what is that process? So the first thing is you'll notice on this home screen, you have a few icons or a few applications. If you swipe over, you might have a few more here, but these are not all the applications on the phone. If you want to find the rest of the applications, you'll simply need to, from the home screen, swipe up and it will take you to what is called the app drawer. And this is where you'll find all of the other applications that are on the phone. They're all in this section. So this page and on this page. So. That's where you see everything that's on the phone. And you'll notice at the top here, you have a couple of folders. This is a folder with Google applications, a folder with Microsoft applications, and a folder with Samsung applications. So next, I'm going to go over how do you download an application or a game on the phone? Well, you'll need to look for this icon, which is called the Play Store. The Play Store is your basically one-stop shop to download things for your phone. So um, applications, games, um, the, there's so many different things you can download for your phone. I'm going to quickly pause. I'm going to go back to talking about that in a second. I first want to go over how do you sign in to the Play Store. So you will need a Google account or a Gmail account, which is basically the same thing and you'll need to sign into it because every time you download an app, it saves it under your Google account, um, which makes it easier um, to download those apps once you get a new phone. It just saves them all under the same account. So you do need to sign into your Gmail first before you do anything else. Now, uh, we can kill two birds with one stone here. Um, if you currently have a Gmail account, um, we're going to do this. So I'm going to go home, tap the home button here. We're going to swipe up and in the Google folder, just tap 
on this folder that says Google and go to Gmail. So uh, I'm gonna help you sign into your Gmail account so you can see all your Gmails. And once we sign into that, it's gonna automatically unlock the Play Store or basically sign us into it so we can then download applications. So I'm gonna hit, I've uh, got it here. And it says, add an email address. I'm gonna tap here to do that. And I'm gonna tap on Google. And this part usually just takes a second. Um, if your phone already has data service or you're connected to Wi-Fi, then you should be able to do this. However, if you're not connected to Wi-Fi or your phone's data service, then it won't allow you to sign in. So make sure you're connected to a network. I'm gonna tap in this box that says email or phone. And then I'm gonna type in my email address and my password. Now, if you don't have a Google account or a Gmail account, this is where you'll need to tap create account. And that will allow you to set up uh, a free Gmail account. And it'll just ask you for some basic information, first name, last name, and what you want your um, Gmail account to be. So it's a super easy process, it's very quick, and it just starts with tapping create account. I'm gonna quickly uh, enter my information and then we'll jump to the next screen and start talking about how to download applications. Okay, so I've just entered my um, Gmail account and password, and this is the next screen that it's taking me to which says turn on your backup and sync. So you can turn this on and it will begin to sync um, everything on your device, such as contacts. Uh, so in the event you lose your phone, all those contacts saved uh, will be saved to the cloud. And it just makes it easier for you to uh, recover these contacts when you sign into a new phone. So I am gonna tap turn on backup and sync. I'm gonna tap I agree to the terms and conditions. And after that, um, it'll ask you a few more questions about backing up to Google Drive. We're going to hit accept. And then after a few seconds, you'll see your email address pop up here and hit take me to Gmail. And we're good. We're officially signed in. This is where you'll find all of your uh, Gmails and you can, you know, start looking at emails, reading and responding. Now, one other important note, um, you can add other Google accounts. Um, or you can add other email accounts to this application. So if I tap on the menu here in the upper left corner, next you're going to just swipe up and tap on settings and tap add account. And this will take you back to this screen and it will allow you to add your other email accounts. So if you have an Outlook, Hotmail, Yahoo, or any other email accounts, you can add them selecting one of these options here. And then in your Google account, you can toggle back and forth between those different accounts by simply uh, in the upper right corner, tapping on this little circle. By tapping it, you'll see all the email accounts will show up underneath here. And you can just tap on, an on another one on the list to jump to a different email account. So I'm gonna tap our home button to go back to the home screen. And now we're gonna to go to the Play Store again, and you'll notice we are signed in and now able to download applications. So again, everything is tied to your Gmail or Google account, and once you get signed in, it unlocks more things on your phone. So, um, you'll find so many different applications and games in here. I just wanna point out a few things. At the bottom of the screen, you'll find games and you're in the game section. If you just wanna browse and see what games are available, you can simply swipe through just like that. You can tap on apps. These are um, other things like Netflix, Hulu, um, social media apps like Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook. You find that in this section. Movies and TV, you can go through and you can buy movies or TV shows to watch on your phone, and you can buy books as well. So those are the different sections. Now, although they have those separate into sections, by um, just doing a quick swipe down, you'll have a search box at the top of the screen here, and this will allow you to search through apps and games. 
So let's say there's a specific game you're looking for for your phone. You want to download a crossword puzzle game. This is the easiest way to search. I can either tap in the box at the top of the screen here or, you know, and type it. I can type in crossword and it will begin to make recommendations. Or I can tap on the microphone in the upper right corner. And I can just say crossword puzzle. Crossword puzzle. And this is using the voice to text feature. So tapping the microphone will allow you to talk and then it will just type out what you said. And so here, there's a few different crossword puzzle games. Uh, I like this one here, so I'm going to tap on it. Now one thing you'll notice, um, there's, a, there's always gonna be a big green button and it'll either say install or it'll say, um, it'll have a price there. If it says install, that means that the application is free. If there's a price there, it means that that's how much it costs to buy that game or application. So be aware of that. If you're not looking to purchase a game and it shows a price, then you'll need to hit your back button to go out of that and try to look for another application that's free. Um, let's try it again here. I'm gonna tap on it. And if I like this one, now one way to know if you're gonna like it here is tap on the pictures under the green button. So just tap here. You can swipe through and see what the application looks like or the game and see if it looks appealing to you. I'm gonna hit the back button here. And let's say I say, hey, I like this. I'm gonna download it. Tap on this big green button that says install and it will begin to download that application on the phone. And you'll notice while it's downloading, um, here you'll see other suggested apps that you might like based on what we're downloading here, like a Scrabble app here or Solitaire. I can tap on here and say, oh, this Solitaire game looks nice. I can tap install and now I'd be downloading that too. Now I'm gonna hit the back button to go back one step and you'll notice we don't see our green install button here anymore. Now it says play and that tells us that the application is ready for us to play it. Now we're not gonna play it from here. I'm actually gonna go home. So tap the home button at the bottom. I'm gonna swipe up to get to my app section and swipe over one screen. And this is where you can see where the shortcut is for that application. So I, I like to show people how to get to it here because once you open your phone and you say, hey, I wanna play that game I just downloaded, how do I find it? Well, simple, swipe up and there it is. It should be on this screen or this screen, one of the two. And I can just tap crosswords here, tap I accept, and then I'm gonna be right into the game and be able to start playing it. So it's just that easy to download an application or game, find it and begin to use it. Gonna tap the home button here. So that was the process for downloading applications and just the kind of uh, information behind it you would need to get started. Now, the next thing I wanna go over is how to make a call and how to send a text message. So the bottom of the screen here, this little green button with a phone on it, this is your phone. And you'll have three options here, keypad, recent apps and contacts. Now I'm gonna tap on keypad, and this is how you easily dial a number. Obviously put in the zip code, 323-853-1212, and tap the green button to start the call. And I don't have a SIM card in the phone right now, so it's not gonna let me make calls, but that's the whole process to make a phone call. Literally green button, make sure you're on the keypad, type in the number, and then hit this green button here to make the call. And then it'll begin to ring, and then if they pick up, great, if not, they won't. You'll see a red button on the side here, which is the button you tap when you're ready to end the call. Tap the red button, the call will be over. Super easy. And then when someone calls you, you're gonna see a green button and a red button, and it's the same thing. You tap the green button, or actually, I take that back. It looks a little bit different now. You might see, um, so 
depending on when you see this video, the process does change from time to time. Um, on some versions of this phone, you'll see a green button and a red button, and you either tap the green button to answer the call or tap the red button to decline it, which is to say I don't want to answer, or um, you'll see um, a button in the center of the phone that you'll swipe up to answer and swipe down to decline. I want to say the way you'll see it is the green button on the left and red on the right. So uh, when someone calls you and you see those two buttons, green means go, answer, red means decline, don't answer, and that's it. Now let's go over how to send a text message. We're going to tap on this little blue icon here at the bottom right next to the phone. This is your text messaging app. And we're going to tap on this blue circle at the bottom right corner to start a new text message. So I'm going to first type in the phone number that I want to text. There we go. And then I'm going to hit the next button at the bottom here on the keyboard. It'll bring me right to this box that says enter message and I begin to type what I want to send. Hi, how are you? And then hit this circle button here to send the message. Now one important thing I want to add is if you like to send someone uh, a picture or something additional, you can tap on this little arrow in the left side right next to the message, this top arrow. It'll bring up the menu and allow you to send a picture so this first square is you sending a picture that's already saved to your phone. And to the right of it is a camera. If you tap on the camera, it'll allow you to take a picture or record a video first and then uh, attach it to the text message and send it. So I'm going to tap on take picture. It's going to bring up the camera and I'm going to take this quick picture. If you notice, there was a little white circle. I just tapped on the white circle to take the picture. And now I'm going to press OK. And it's going to add our picture to the message. So there's our picture. There's the message we typed. And then we're going to tap on this little circle to send the message. So that is how you send a text message and also how you add a picture to it as well. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is how to set up the fingerprint scanner so you can unlock the phone using your finger. We're going to swipe down from the top of the screen and in the upper right corner tap on this little settings wheel. I'm going to swipe up until you, until you see um, biometrics and security and then tap on fingerprints. Now you can you can program one of two things. You can either program what is called the facial recognition or the fingerprint sensor or both. The facial recognition is really cool. You can bring the phone up to your face and it will unlock the phone um, once it verifies it's you. Or you can um, use the fingerprint sensor, which I kind of prefer in this case you take your finger and you just tap the screen on a certain spot and it will unlock the phone using your fingerprint. So for the sake of this, I'm going to show you how to do the fingerprint sensor. But if you'd like to set up the face recognition later, go back to this section and just tap on face recognition. Let's move forward with fingerprints. Tap continue. So whenever you set up a fingerprint sensor, um, on the phone, you do need to set a backup password and that's in the event the fingerprint sensor stops working, you have another method to unlock the phone. So I'm gonna tap on a uh, pattern and just set a security pattern that uh, is a backup in the event that my fingerprint sensor is not working. I'm just gonna make mine an L to make it simple. It'll ask you to put it in twice, confirm it, and now, it's going to start learning my fingerprint so I could use it to unlock the phone. So I'm going to move the phone up here. This is the fingerprint sensor. It's in the screen. So you're going to take your finger and just press 
and follow the instructions you see on the screen. So it'll ask you to adjust, move your finger around the button in different ways so it can learn it. Make sure I'm covering the whole sensor. And this process um, is usually pretty quick. It, it, should, it won't take more than a minute usually, but again, it has to get a good read on your finger. So just be patient with it. Just keep lifting and then placing it back down in slightly different positions so that it can learn your uh, fingerprint. We're almost there now. I think I've probably been lifting my finger a little bit too fast, so put it down and keep it there. And now we're almost done. Okay, we're getting to the end here. And there we go. So you do have the option to add another fingerprint. And I usually like to do my pointer finger and my thumb. And I usually will do one finger on my left hand as well. I'm right handed, but um, I'll do one finger on the left side just in case I grab the phone with my other hand. I still can unlock it with my finger. But in this case, I'm just going to stop it after programming this one fingerprint. Hit done. And we're all set. So now I'm going to lock the phone or put it to sleep by hitting the power button. Tap it again. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see this icon. This is your fingerprint icon. And this is how you'll unlock the phone. You take your finger, place it right on there. And voila, you've unlocked the phone. So this makes the phone a bit more secure because no one can just pick up your phone and start using it. They will, it will require your fingerprint or that backup uh, pattern that we sent. So that's how you set up the fingerprint sensor. So you have that extra security and you can unlock your phone really easy. So this has been our video. We tried to be super thorough and really go over everything you would need to know to get started. I hope you found this video helpful. Make sure you like, favorite, and share if it was helpful. Hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos. Take care and as always, have a good one.